better get married soon. You, you starting to look old. In his defense, Tula is 30, and the actress playing her is 40. My dad's been saying that to me since I was 15. Oh, hi there, narration fairy. You're up early. As nice Greek girls are supposed to do three things in life. Marry Greek boys, make Greek babies, and feed everyone until the day we die. Isn't that true of basically any conservative culture? Replace Greek with Jewish and throw in a couple songs and you've got Fiddler on the Roof. If we're going to get technical, and I intend to, those fancy E's are actually the Greek letter Sigma, which translates to an S. So this actually reads my big fat grisk wedding. Why is working at your family's restaurant considered such a death sentence? Oh, my immigrant family owns three successful small businesses. It sucks. The other girls were blonde and delicate. And I was a swarthy six-year-old with sideburns. Did she go to some Aryan boarding school? Even if the school had a diversity problem, there had to be one other non-blonde at her school. If Nick has one goat and Maria has nine, how soon will they marry? Man, we are just under four minutes into the movie and she's already culturally painting the Greek people into a corner. What's she going to talk about next? Their inability to handle finances? I don't know a lot of Greeks, but this seems a little heavy-handed. Imagine if the parents in the fake movie My Big Fat Russian Wedding lived in a house that looked like St. Basil's Cathedral. Also, this garage is the only thing that has ever forced me to see the benefit in homeowners associations. My dad believed in only two things. That Greeks should educate non-Greeks about being Greek, and that any ailment, from psoriasis to poison ivy, could be cured with Windex. Okay, maybe he does spray Windex on everything, but his priorities are way skewed if one of his two only beliefs in life is Windex-based. You should be proud to be Greek. Does he think about anything else, or is his brain just filled with bazooki music and people throwing plates? I'm all for being proud of your heritage, but he has to have some personal hopes and dreams. A couple more years went by, and my dad brought his mother over from Greece to live with us. Because we weren't weird enough. There's absolutely nothing weird about an adult child taking care of their aged parent. In fact, it's like one of the most honorable things a person can do. How can her little racist friend spin that one? Those Greeks down the road take care of their grandma. How weird. We just put ours in a home and ignore her. We told my grandma the war was over, but she still slept with a knife under her pillow. Ha! Huh, she has PTSD and is afraid of being murdered. What a crazy old lady. My brother has two jobs, to cook and to marry a Greek virgin. Every Greek person can be wholly described by two things. That's racist. Also, aren't those basically the same jobs that are expected of nice Greek girls? At least there's gender parity. If nagging was an Olympic sport, my Aunt Vula would have a gold medal. And if on-the-nose, expositional, and slightly sexist narration was an Olympic sport, you would have a gold medal. My sister married young and became a Greek baby breeding machine. In case you missed it, Greek women are just supposed to have babies and nothing else. If you're still having trouble, don't worry. I'm sure they'll mention it again. Joey Fatone is, of course, of Italian descent, not Greek. That's racist. You have plenty of time. I'm not sure this comment juxtaposed with her dad telling 15-year-old Tula that she needs to get married because she looks old is a sexism sin on Greek culture or just this movie. For our purposes, let's blame the movie. It's useless to dream because nothing ever changes. Losing all hope right before a glimmer of hope cliche. Apparently this is the first time a handsome man has ever come into the restaurant because she is creep staring at him like a middle ages time traveler who just saw a shower for the first time. They look the same. By establishing that he doesn't see the big deal with blonde chicks, they're really just establishing that his type is the opposite, ladies with dark skin and hair. I bet his last four girlfriends were Hispanic. All right, let's go. What do you mean, I just got here. I know, I got a class though. Mike has terrible timing. He invites Ian to meet him at a restaurant, but they only have enough time to look at a Polaroid taken at a party he went to the night before. This reminds us that 2002, even though it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, is now a relic of the distant past. We've been doing a lot of unnecessary ordering. You get a computer. I could go to college and um, take a few courses. Why do you want to leave me? Tula is making an effort to improve their business, but all he seemed to latch on to was I could take some college classes, which means he's not a good listener, or his English isn't great, or both. Also, doesn't her dad know that colleges have a Greek system? The man is the head, but the woman is the neck. What's the unmarried daughter? The appendix? Someone for she needs more school. She's smart enough for a girl. Oh, you think you're smarter than me, huh? Maria didn't really convince Gus this was a good idea. She mostly just yelled at him for that comment about Tula being smart enough for a girl. While valid, her outrage didn't really accomplish anything. I guess her dad is just confused enough now Tula gets to go to college. Tula's going to college montage depicts more of her giving herself a makeover than her actually learning about computers. I understand the parallel between this moment and the moment with the blonde girls when she was six, but the maturity level of a bunch of 25 to 30 year olds is probably much higher than their six year old counterparts, making Tula's transition to the popular table a lot easier. I hope this class isn't just an elaborate April Fool's joke. Expedia will make all of this irrelevant. Your aunt will go out of business in three years. April Fool's. Oh, woe to me. Business is bad. If we were to zoom out next to Maria, we would see someone holding cue cards for Vula to read. Tula will go to the travel agency, and you send Nikki here to work for us. 
Wow, that was really easy for Mr. Why Do You Want to Leave Me to send his daughter to another business. Hello, Mrs. Christakis. Thanks for holding. Contact lenses in one computer class have also really boosted her customer service skills. Keep your mother off my lawn. Jane Eastwood continues the tradition of Eastwoods, telling other races to get off their lawn. Okay, something should give before this happens. Unless this is the strongest grip a headset has ever had, and the phone is bolted to her desk, I'm not buying that this would body slam her to the ground. Tulip, porky pocket. Protocolis. The one dude she's been horny over for months basically insults her name, just as much as the mean girls used to do at school, but she lets it slide. I don't know anything about you, except you're Greek. That is about all I know too. Also, what the hell did you guys talk about for five hours behind her desk at the travel agency? I know, I don't wanna go there. What do you mean, why not? Um, my family owns that restaurant. I remember you. Character meets love interest pre-makeover, then has a chance with them post-makeover, but character doesn't want them to know who they are, and love interest remembers them anyway, cliche. I don't remember Frump Girl, but I remember you. He can't tell two blonde women apart. He doesn't notice frumpiness. Are we sure Ian doesn't have some kind of rare face blindness? Does everyone look like the Greendale human being to him? Tula's being so secretive about her culturally proud and a little rambunctious family. If I were Ian, I might start assuming something really strange, like they're cult leaders or people who watch the Big Bang Theory. Montage to show they keep going on dates, but Ian still hasn't gotten laid. An alternate title of this movie could have been The 30-Year-Old Virgin. Don't go. We can do it right here in the car. The pottery class? Uh -huh. It's great. Excellent cover, Tula. She totally bought it. But really, though, she seemed to totally buy that. Mother Mary Joseph, almost halfway through the movie, and we're so far away from planning a big fat Greek wedding, her mother's telling her to break up with her boyfriend. Guy that parents set up with her daughter is not appropriate for anyone cliché. Actually, this turns into a whole unacceptable montage, in itself a cliché. Let's add five sins for this bullshit. This man is clearly a sex criminal that her father picked up off the street. I feel like the police are out looking for him. Me, didn't you once have a Greek receptionist? Guatemalan. Oh, that's right, dear. She was Guatemalan. Yep. I guess if they're going to keep nailing stereotypes, they had to nail the Wasp family also. And they did. Maybe. Tula doesn't respond. What the hell's wrong with you? Why would you ask me that while we're both half-naked in bed? Could you imagine telling the kids this story? Mom, tell us a story of how Dad proposed. Well, he had just finished going down on me. Is he a good boy? I don't know. Was the last guy you brought home for Tula a good boy? Based on the way he was assaulting that spoon, probably not. Did you ever have a class interrupted when a teacher's girlfriend or boyfriend came by and creepily stared into the room? Why do you love me? Because I came alive when I met you. That is a very romantic way of saying she gives him boners. Did you say skulk? <laughs> Skulk is a totally normal word that people in their 30s should be comfortable with. Who's that food for? Nikki gonna be your godmother. Nikki isn't going to be my godmother. Also, I don't want to seem ignorant of Greek Orthodox traditions, but, well, I am. Is this really the baptism kiddie pool? Because this looks like a very nice church. Is the real one in the shop or something? I would imagine you would need to attend the Greek Orthodox church for a little while to show signs that you're practicing the faith before they would baptize you. Oh, you're all oily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Greek now. I guess as soon as you become Greek, you get all oily. That's actually really racist. For real. If you hurt her, I'll kill you and make it look like an accident. No, the good one is I got a gun. I'll lighten you when I take out your kidneys. We're gonna kill ya! Tula's brother and cousin tell Ian they are going to kill him five times within 30 seconds. Let me touch your hair. Let me. Congratulations, Ian. This is one of the few times a white guy is subjected to that question. The North Shore Country Club. For the wedding, of course. Ian's mother should know the rule about the bride's family plans the wedding. These two families definitely have their differences, but that rule is the same for both the wasps and the Greeks. My cousin Nikki made me this. But you didn't have to bring it to the in-law's house. Ian's parents' characters are that they are white. Who knows how long I'm gonna be alive? Her dad is just kind of a manipulative prick. I don't think this has anything to do with him being Greek. Orea Vigia! After he says this and Tula's brother is slapped for telling Ian the wrong phrase, Ian doesn't react one way or another that he said something that definitely wasn't thanks. Maria not only decided to order wedding invitations and tell no one for two weeks, but also thought the best place to store them was in the kitchen cabinets, because she was waiting for someone to talk about wedding invitations in the kitchen, creating an opportunity for this seamless reveal. The family? You invited the, the whole family? At 30, she should be able to anticipate things like this. Her family doesn't stray too much from certain key rules. One of the big ones is the family comes to all the things. I know this and I've only been watching them for an hour. Did they not tell Ian's parents that plans change from a quiet dinner to a family barbecue? They didn't look so horrified at normal barbecue behavior. This party is f***ing expensive. Two whole lambs plus sides? This meal costs like a thousand dollars. Anita, Diane, and Nick. Taki, Sophie, Kari, Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick, Nick. So everyone in the family gets a normal Americanized name except for Tula and Aunt Bula. Thank you. What is it? Come on, you never saw a bunt cake in a supermarket? I'm not falling for that again, Nick. Were you even aware you fell for it the first time? See that? That's where we from. Oh. You like them? I make them. Oh. Did these actors get a paycheck for being extras? 
Or did they even get day player status? If their characters were murdered, the detective would immediately close the case for being too inconsequential. And inside the lump, he found teeth and a spinal column. Inside the lump was my twin. I smell a spinoff, my big fat Greek lump. Tula's family is a thousand times more chill than Ian's pinched ass parents. I don't know why people who live in Chicago, a city with one of the country's highest Greek populations, are so perplexed by Greek food. Opa! Opa! White parents drinking montage is so obviously filler to inflate the runtime, you can see the editor's grudge marks on the print. We're all nice to them, you see it. And, and they look at us like we're from the zoo. Movie makes it seem like this Greek family went way, way too far in trying to impress Ian's parents. But since his parents didn't try at all, maybe the movie should stop to consider whether they're worth trying to impress. You're gonna ask me to be your best man? Well, yeah. I had no idea you had so few friends. Oh, shit. that's one of those jokes that's not really a joke. I mean, according to this movie, he just has the one. Poor Ian. No wonder he is excited to have a big family. My village saw many wars. Turkish, German. They all made a mess. They all made a mess is the movie's first understatement, and it's about Nazis. We came here for you, so you could, so you could live. Okay, immigrant parents are awesome, minus one sin. Did Maria coordinate this history lesson, or does Grandma's dementia give her excellent timing? We may be lambs in the kitchen, but we are tigers in the bedroom. I am now imagining a lamb in a kitchen being very ineffective. Is this the movie's third or fourth montage? I lost count. Her entire bridal party is her family. She even has fewer friends than Ian. I'm a snow beast. Tula didn't try on her wedding dress several times and have several fittings before the day of the wedding. Are the Millers such huge assholes that no one wanted to come to their son's wedding? How am I supposed to know what's going on? They've had months of heads up on the fact their son is getting married in a Greek Orthodox church. Fifteen minutes of research before the ceremony would have been a good idea. All Greek to me. I was hoping we would make it through this movie without hearing this, but you just couldn't help yourselves. Also, Ian's parents just reveled in a joke that's older than the color white itself. This is it. We take our first steps as husband and wife. Tula explained something to Ian that they should have gone over in the rehearsal. It's almost like she's not explaining this to Ian, but to me. No one tell the Greeks that a German wrote the wedding march. Wipe off. <laughs> the better? Yeah. She wipes off her makeup, then has on the perfect amount of makeup. There is no way that's not a sex club. A miller come from the Greek word milo, which is mean apple. Well, I know this is a running gag, but miller comes from the northern Middle English term for millkeeper, but that would ruin his touching analogy. Uh, we, we all uh, different, but... Uh, in the end, uh, we all fruit. The whole apples and oranges idiom pertains to two things that are so different they can't be compared, which is quite different than the way he took it, which just goes to show you, if you have a character who doesn't speak English very well, no need to spend time having his or her lines make sense. See, that's what we do. The parents, they give a gift. Oh. Right, that's very different from other cultures where the parents never give gifts. He bought us a house. Let's not get too sappy too quick. Tula knows these people too well to not immediately ask, wait, what's the catch? Ian's parents wait until the reception to no longer be stuffy assholes. Maybe this is what they're like after two shots and we miss that during the shots montage at the house. And wherever I go, whatever I do, they will always be there. That's a mildly horrifying thought to have just before your wedding night. And six years later, it was our daughter's turn to go to Greek school. But mom, I want to go to brownies. I'm is there not another brownie troupe in the Chicagoland area that she could join? Or another Greek school? Just saying, she could do both. And they live right next to her parents. Make sure to check out the upcoming sequel, My Big Fat Greek Everybody Loves Raymond. Also, I tried to warn her. Is she pregnant again, or is Tula's sister pulling a Bonnie Swanson? Any ailment from psoriasis to poison ivy could be cured with Windex. Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins. And now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. You can't sit with us! So, Tula. Ian. James. Tarzan. James. Tarzan. James. Tarzan. James. And leave space. Sometimes that space is so big that the roof can't support itself, so it collapses. And here, my brother George. His wife, Frida, and their children, Anita, Diane, and Nick. The first time I was introduced to all of them at once, it was crazy. Paulie and his brothers had lots of sons and nephews. And almost all of them were named Peter or Paul. Mr. Portcullis, cheese straw and nasty. You kill my daughter, and I curse you. Fina. You think anybody can see us down here? Why? Do you want to have sex or something? Can we?